مونه Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, uh, welcome to our worship. Um, no notices, as far as I know. Um, please join us for tea and coffee afterwards and fellowship. Um, I will light the candle, and if we can have a few moments silence, and Hazel will collect any prayer leaves. And I'd like to welcome Lee to our pulpit, and I'll hand over to you, Lee. Thank you. Uh, good morning, church, and welcome to uh, welcome to worship this morning. Um, there's just uh, one notice for me, if I could slip it in, uh, just to mention that I won't be around um, the area from Thursday until the following Thursday, because I'm up in Telford at the Methodist Conference. Um, so if you need to speak to somebody, uh, Naomi will be around, um, but I will be able to respond to emails if you uh, wanted to get in touch that way. Let's just still ourselves uh, and prepare for worship with some words uh, from the Psalms. As the deer longs for the water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? Amen. And so we come before the presence of God in, in word, in sacrament and in song. So I invite you to stand as you're able for our first hymn. Speak, O Lord, as you come to me.
So we come to God in prayer. Let's pray. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may worthily magnify your holy name. Who is our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. In what have not loved to you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. And the prayer for today. Creator God, in the beginning your word subdued the chaos. And in the fullness of time you sent Jesus your son to rebuke the forces of evil and to make all things new. By that same power transform our fear into faith that we may have courage to follow in the way of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Next one, please, Andrea. Thank you. And we share together in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, mighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we, we sing of the love that God has for us in our next hymn. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure.
by Irene to come and share our reading from Scripture with us. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses, surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the word of the Lord. So friends, we, uh, we return to exploring the Methodist way of life. Um, that, uh, that idea and that concept that we've been looking at over this connectional year. Over the last nine months, we've, we've journeyed through the first three sections of the Methodist way of life. We've considered worship, learning and caring, and service. And today, we begin our final section, where the three commitments will take us to the end of the connectional year. For those of you that were at our general church meeting yesterday, you might remember that the last of the sections in the Methodist way of life is around evangelism. And the three, connection, the three con, um, commitments that we'll consider over the next three months are the fact that we will speak of the love of God, we will live in a way that draws others to Jesus, and we will share our faith with others. So today we're going to be considering how we can speak of the love of God. Acknowledging that it isn't the comfort zone for a lot of people. It certainly isn't my comfort zone. But it's something that we're called to do as Christians. We'll consider this commitment to speak of the love of God by asking five questions. What? Who, where, when, and how. So what is it we've been asked to do in this commitment? Oh, we've been asked to, to verbalise the love of God that we know as Christians. To talk about the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. And talking about the life, death and resurrection of Jesus can seem something really distant to those who have not been involved in the life of the church. So we're being asked to talk about our own experiences and tell others about our encounters with God. Maybe there was a time when you felt really close to God. A time when you felt great joy and rejoicing and felt that God was there with you. Maybe there was a time in life when things were particularly dark and difficult. But you could just sense that God was there holding you. Holding you through those struggles. Those are the types of encounters and experiences that we might more easily share with other people. Rather than talking about Jesus himself. It's not unusual, though, is it, for us to, to doubt that God is there. We see it in the opening of Psalm 22, words that Jesus himself echoes on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I wonder how often you've shouted those words when it's felt that God is far away.
Within evangelism, there's this idea about an elevator testimony. And it might be something you want to think about. Could you tell someone how amazing God is in the time that it takes to journey on an elevator? What could you say to somebody in a lift to tell them about how wonderful Jesus is? So the answer to the question what is to talk about God in your life. Who comes next? That's who should speak and who should be spoken to. And the answer to both of the questions is pretty similar. All of us should be speaking and we should be speaking to everyone. John Wesley once said, all need to be saved, all can be, all can be saved, all can know that they are saved, and all can be saved to the uppermost. But that can only happen if those of us who have encountered God in our lives, in whatever way that might be, speak about that experience to other people. Does it mean that we, we just strike up a conversation with a random person sitting next to us on the bus or the train? Probably not, unless that's a particular skill and gift that we've been given. But rather we're being called to start with those that we know best. To talk with our family and our friends who might not yet know God. Romans 10 verse 14 asks... How are they to hear without someone proclaiming him, proclaiming Jesus? If we don't share our experiences, other people won't come to know that they can be saved. Where then? Again, the answer follows on, everywhere. But again, there's that sense of starting where we are. Starting in our homes with our neighbours at work. Telling those around us in, in the next few days about what's happened at church today. Or about the amazing baptism service that we had last week. We're called to be alert to, to those inconspicuous questions that people might ask us. That allow us to engage in a conversation about God. In a world where there is... There is so much anger about structural inequalities, about systemic racism, about fear around the economy and jobs. There is this real need to share the message of Jesus with other people. And we've seen it this week, haven't we, where the Lord Spiritual, the, the bishops in the House of Lords, and many others have spoken up about sending refugees to Rwanda. And we're called to share in the message about how we can be a more inclusive society and demonstrate the importance of Jesus in the world around us and in the decisions that we make. When? You might have got the hint by now, but I'll, I'll put it in a different way with some words from Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. We live in a culture where, where faith seems to be out of fashion. Where it's not the cultural norm to, to have this belief in something greater than us. But then again, wasn't Jesus countercultural too? Wasn't Jesus challenging the norms of his day? It's sometimes easier, isn't it, to speak of God when life is good, either for ourselves or for those around us. But as we come to hopefully recognise during COVID, God is there in the darkness and the struggles too even though it might be difficult for us to sense and to vocalise it. So how do we do it? Well, the words, words are the obvious route, aren't they? 
the importance of sharing with others what's going on in the life of the church about how we sense God in our lives and in the lives of other people that nudge of encouragement that we can offer to others when we sense that God is leading them to something new but our words aren't always uh, enough if we don't follow them through with actions and we can think of those words that are often attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Preach the gospel at all times and if necessary use words. To Timothy chapter 4 says, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favourable or unfavourable. Convince, rebuke and encourage with the utmost patience of teaching. Friends, speaking of God takes courage, but it's something that's really important. Something that has to be followed with action. And we think about Jesus speaking to thousands of people on the hillside, declaring the message of God's love for them. And afterwards he took action and fed them. We need to balance our words with the actions in all that we do. So some thoughts to hold in mind. To speak about God's love is to reinforce it in our lives. Speaking of our faith prompts action. And speaking of God's love emboldens our desire to share it. So what can we do this week to share the love of God with those around us? Amen. And so we, we invite God to be upon us in all that we do as we uh, sing the hymn, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Sorry, Christine, I think that was my fault. Put the wrong number down. So we come to God in prayer. Let's pray. We pray for ourselves and for the world around us. God, most gracious and most holy, grant us the help of your spirit as we pray for the church and the world. We pray for the church in every land. 
your church throughout the world, particularly your church which is persecuted and oppressed by the authorities around them. We pray for this church here in Yate and for our brothers and sisters in Christ across this area. We pray that we may worship and serve you with reverence and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the peoples of the world. We pray for those who are suffering from conflict and violence. Those who are suffering from famine and drought. We pray for those for whom the increasing cost of living is becoming more and more difficult. We pray for the work of the food bank here in Yate and across this country for the food parcels that they will be providing as people struggle more and more. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that they may work together for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are ill or distressed. And we pray for the lonely and the bereaved. We hold before you particularly those for whom this might be their first Father's Day without their dads around. We pray for all those in any other need or trouble. And in a moment of silence and stillness we name in our hearts those who are known to us who are in need of God's comfort and support at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we remember before you all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray that we too may lead faithful and godly lives in this world and finally share with all the saints in everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught his disciples, we bring our prayers together in the words of Jesus' great prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us therefore keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing our pre-communion hymn during which we receive the offering for the work of God in this place and beyond. So come, let us sing of a wonderful love, steadfast and true.
Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, who gives us everything that we have, we thank you. And in these difficult times, we ask you to help us share all we have with others, that through our actions, may your love will shine through. Amen. Just to remind you, when we get to the distribution of communion, the communion stewards will uh, direct you to the front and invite you to uh, kind of stand uh, around the bottom step and then uh, myself and Joy will come and uh, distribute the bread and the wine to you. And the table is open to all who wish to come and to receive. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, gracious Father, our Maker and Sustainer. You created the heavens and the earth and formed us in your image. Though we sinned against you, your love for us was constant. And you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Saviour of the world. Sharing our human nature, he was born of Mary and baptised in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and deed and was put to death upon the cross. You raised him from the dead. You exalted him in glory and through him you have sent your Holy Spirit, calling us to be your people, a community of faith. And so with angels and archangels and all the choirs of heaven, we join in the triumphant hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, we praise you that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Saviour Jesus took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, and proclaiming his eternal sacrifice, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as we declare the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send down your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole creation to your eternal glory. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, 
and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Draw near with faith, for the table is prepared, and all are welcome.
we pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us the foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning, I'll need on the screen because I can't remember what it was. <laughs> In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is the light, my strength, my song.